Hello and welcome to the Genuine Learning Blog. My name is Melissa Galasso and today we're going to talk about the future of jobs. Now, while we are going to talk a little bit about COVID, what we're actually going to talk about is the report issued by the World Economic Forum. This report has been used to help us understand how jobs are changing, what skills are going to be needed in the future, and now the impact of COVID-19. So the 2020 jobs report is out, uh, and it does provide us some guidance on what is the labor market looking like? What skills do we need? How do we prepare our our people for the future of what work is going to look like. Obviously, we're going to talk about technology, but we're also going to talk about how do we skill and how do we upskill and what are the skills that we need to be ready for the future. So the goal that they focused on, obviously, given the global pandemic, was to understand how the global pandemic actually impacted jobs, right? What kind of disruption uh, was created there? Uh, and so obviously that you know, work from home, other uh, events, but also we saw a significant amount of layoffs. We saw a significant amount of changing uh, how we do the work that we do. Uh, and so that is obviously a big element. And then obviously the goal of tech, role of technology. So no surprise, as you can expect, the pace of technology change continues. Uh, so despite a global pandemic that's not stopping us from adopting new technology, so cloud computing, big data, e-commerce, right, still high priorities. Those are things that are being adopted, obviously, uh, very much today. But what's really interesting as we, you know, this has been a trend for a number of years, we're also seeing more artificial intelligence, non-humanoid robots. And so as you can see, we are starting to see those things that sort of sounded like the Jetsons years ago, really coming into play here. And so we always talk about the future, but I think a lot of this technology is really here to say. And so you can see that from what we consider to be the uh, double disruption. So again, of all the businesses surveyed here, when they looked at automation and COVID-19, it's creating a double disruption, right? 43% of those who were surveyed, the businesses that were surveyed, indicated that they are set to reduce their workforce due to technology integration, right? So they don't need as many people. 41% expand to expand their use of contractors for task specific work, right? So there's a lot of conversation about the gig economy and how that's going to play out. And 34% actually plan to expand their workforce, but due to technology, right? So as we look at this, right, when we think about this economic contraction that was happening, we have technolo uh, technological advancement, and all of this is going to now come together. So the expectation is that by 2025, the time spent on current tasks at work by humans and machines will be equal, right? So we're going to start leveraging these machines to do equal amount of work. Uh, and so you think about this, this is gonna require changes to location, value chains, workforce, and technology. So we are gonna to continue to have jobs go away, jobs that can be done better, faster, quicker, and cheaper by a computer. However, the good news is, is the number of jobs of tomorrow are still expected to surpass the number of jobs that are going to be destroyed. The question is, will we have the people who are skilled for the jobs of the future, right? So as these jobs are being destroyed, are we skilling our people so that they can take on that job that's going to exist afterwards? So when we think about this in contrast to prior years, right, we're starting to see this job creation is slowing, but job destruction is accelerating, right? And we can think a lot about COVID-19 for that. So when we look at 2025, which sounds far away, but really isn't, right? Employers expect that by 2025, increasingly redundant roles will decline from 15.4% of the workforce to 9%, right? So that's a 6.4% decline. And emerging professions will grow from 7.8 to 13.5. So you can see here, we only see 5.7% growth with a 6.4% decline as we go through this. So 85 million jobs are expected to be displaced by a shift in the division of labor between humans and machines, right? So that's by 2025. However, we are expecting those, again, those new roles as we go through here. So 97 million new roles can emerge that can adapt and can work with the computer, with the algorithm. So that leads us to what we keep talking about, especially for those of us who are in learning and development, which is our skills gap. 
right? We have to think about, well, how are we preparing our people for this? And obviously, as we look at the in-demand jobs of the future, do we have the people with the skills to be able to fill it, right? So what are the skills of the future? Critical thinking, right? That's one of the biggest elements here. Problem solving, right? Those are the things. Analysis, things that are going to lead to self-management, active learning, resilience, stress tolerance, I think something we've all been improving on due to COVID-19, and flexibility. So one of the things I always like to do is look at what are those top skills? And I, that's one of the reasons why I've always followed this report. I think it's super helpful. So when we think about this, sometimes we need to reskill or upskill, right? So a, something that you know how to do today is no longer gonna be around. We need to give you a new skill so that you can continue to work. And people who have a skill that now needs to be upskilled to be able to work with a machine. So companies estimate that around 40% of workers will require reskilling of six months or less. 94% of business leaders report, however, that they expect employees to pick up new jobs, uh, new skills on the job. And that's up from what it was 65% in 2018. So we're not necessarily spending the money <laughs> to get people ready for this. We expect them to pick it up on the job. And I think that's something that learning and development really is gonna have to focus on. How do we get these people the skills that they need, uh, even if it is on the job, but still on the job training. We know COVID-19 has had a major impact on the economy, right? Jobs held by lower wage workers, a lot of restaurants and uh, fast food places, right? Significant impacts here. Women and then younger workers most uh, deeply impacted by the first phase of that uh, trans uh, of the um, contraction of the economy. Um, however, um, it will only continue to get worse if we think about technology and pandemic. So we have to be thinking about how can we skill these people for the future. So online learning obviously is something that I'm passionate about. I spent the last year basically teaching all of my classes online and so not surprised about many of these results. Four times uh, in, uh, four time increase in the number of individuals seeking out opportunities for learning online uh, through their own initiative, right? So taking the time to go and find uh, some, uh, you know on demand or a live online course to help them five-time increase in employer provision of online learning, especially for professions like CPAs, where you still had to get your CPE, even if you weren't meeting in person, right? Obviously a nice plus for those of us who are able to uh, uh, assist in that and offer that service. And then nine-time enrollment increase for learners accessing program uh, through government programs, right? So we know online learning is the wave of the future. It's not going away. While we would love to go back to conferences, even when we do, there still be a high demand for hybrid as well as uh, on-demand content. So when we think about this and we think about how it all comes together, right? Those in employment, right? What kind of classes are they taking? Well, they're looking at personal development, right? They're trying to grow their, uh, their soft skills, their business skills, uh, and try to improve so they can be better leaders. What was really interesting is the difference between those that were employed and those that were unemployed. Unemployed individuals were still taking training, but they were focusing on skills of the future, digital learning skills, data analysis, computer science, and information technology. That's not to say that those that were employed weren't doing that, but I think people recognize the skills gap that they have, and especially if they were unemployed looking for a position, recognizing that these are the skills that they need. And it's gonna be a mix of these technology skills with the soft skills that make us that well-rounded person because we will never be completely replaced by a computer. The human element is very much real, but we just have to think about how this plays out. So hopefully that was a nice overview of the report. I do recommend that you take a nice deep look at it. I find it super interesting, especially for those of you who are in learning development or are responsible for growing and developing your team. Uh, always important to be focused on what's coming down the pike, right? We wanna be future ready. We wanna be proactive and not reactive. So thank you for joining me today on the Genuine Learning blog, and I hope to see you on a future blog. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.